everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering One, checking in with 1506 Metal Muscle, last year's MSC champion. So looking for a phenomenal season this year here at Kettering One as well, too. They got a great robot just watched on the field. Really efficient speaker score. So we'll be diving a lot more into that, both the code that goes into it and also the mechanical aspects. And we'll be talking a little bit more about the trap, showcasing some great things. Let's learn more about Metal Muscle coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Dave, let's start off talking about a couple key attributes of your robot. We're going to be talking about the uh, shooter area. So let's talk about the mechanical side of it. Your shot has been so good on the field, driving the war into what's happening here. Yeah, so initially, for when we intake the ring, and then we have the angler come up after it intakes it, and then it is now ready in a shooting position. And then after we are done shooting, it comes back down into a lower mode, ready for the next run to come in. And then for the actual shooter itself, we just got some falcons on here. One on the top, one in the bottom parallel, and then another one here. This one's just the feeder roller. Oh, well, we got then the two in the front for shooting. And those run at 100% power all the time when we're trying to shoot. And the only thing that actually changes is our angle. So now we're gonna show a ring coming up into the robot and then what the robot is then ready to do after. So now the lights are blue, which means that the IR sensor is activated, the robot knows it's ready to shoot, and we're ready for then the code aspect to take over. Before we do that, can we bring the shooter back up? Uh, I'd love to see a little more about the uh, chain and the bar that you have going on there. So talk to me about that. And then uh, do you have multiple positions you're shooting from them? Yeah, so the way that the first up. So in there, we have a gearbox that we made ourselves connected to a Kraken in the back. And that is that way the Kraken has full power over the shooter, can angle it to whatever angle we need, and the sprockets then drive that. And then the different positions we have is all done in math through the code, which then Joshua can talk us through. All right, sure, Joshua, walk me through some of the code uh, aspects of this robot and uh, how you're coming up with your different shots in the field. Okay, so um, the main challenge that we faced this year was uh, instead of having specific presets on the field that we could shoot from, um, we wanted to have to be able to shoot from anywhere on the field um, at a moment's notice. So um, this is why we have this camera here, uh, which will be able to detect the April tag and tell us the distance, how far we are away from that. And uh, using that distance, we constructed a formula using a quadratic regression in which basically uh, the formula if we plug in the distance that we are from the April tag, then it'll tell us what angler set point we need to be able uh, to set to, to to be able to shoot accurately. And uh, using that angler set point, uh, we can shoot from pretty much anywhere that the April tag can be detected reliably. Um, we mentioned before you have the blue LEDs coming up. Are there any other uh, feedback you get uh, for your drivers at all that way? Uh, yeah, so uh, if there's no ring, no note inside of the indexer, then the LEDs will turn red. Um, and then if the April tag is detected and is in range and the robot is aligned, then the LEDs will turn green, signaling that it's ready to shoot. Is there anything on your driver's station that gives you feedback on that too? Um, yeah, on the shuffleboard, uh, there, there is a camera, it's not on right now, but um, the drivers will be able to see from both sides actually, from the intake side and from the shooting side. And um, they have other settings that they're able to change as well. One of the other things uh, we're going to talk about your robot is a trap mechanism. So let's detail more about uh, how that works out. And then, you know, analyzing the game, what made you decide you wanted to go with a trap too? Yeah, so for the trap mechanism, we have what we call a, just like a pizza box. And the way it works is we come up to the source and then <laughs> we then come up to the source, drop the ring in, and then we start intaking the ring comes inside and will stay there until we come up to climb. And then for climbing, the hooks go up. We then are in position to climb. We use our lower hooks 
which brings the chain all the way through and into our robot, and then the shooter will be in this up position. And then the trap mechanism will then go up, and the, when the trap mechanism goes up, we have the little hooks on the sides, and those pull down like that, and that hook puts the plastic piece of the trap mechanism, not the trap, of the trap, and allows us to then score the ring. And yeah, why was scoring and trap uh, such an important objective for your team? So the trap has five points for endgame, which is a lot of points for this season compared to climbing. And that allows us to then get that endgame ranking point that we need. And it's just very helpful instead of having to try and get every single robot to hang and harmonize. Well, 1506 Metal Muscle, uh, thanks for telling us more about your robot this year. Good luck the rest of the way, and congratulations on a great robot so far. We look forward to seeing how you do. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.